Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible. We're going to take a look at the continuation of the stars and star series. We're going to look at Revelation 12. Boy, I've covered this chapter a bunch of times. But uh maybe i'll make this a fairly short one since i've done if if you look at the uh search thing on my uh channel and type in revelation chapter 12 uh i must have done this i've got at least four videos on revelation 12 at least four that i know of for a fact so I'm, I'm going to make this a quick one. All right, Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Does this symbolism appear elsewhere in the Bible? Uh, let's see. Hmm, I wonder. Yes, indeed. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 37, which tells you exactly what this uh, that symbolism means. And if you've never read the Old Testament, you'd never make the connection of the symbolism in Revelation. So, Genesis 37, verse 1. Now remember, Jacob, was his name was changed to Israel by the Lord, and he had 12 sons who became the 12 tribes. Judah was but one tribe. But, you know, you listen to the demon nominational church world. Oh, that's one tribe is all of them. And then Levi, well, uh, Judah was the uh, tribe of the kings. They were to be the king tribe. King David and Christ, line of David. Um, and then you had the Levites. Moses and Aaron were of the tribe of Levi. John the Baptist was of the tribe of Levi. So, let's see. And what's interesting is uh, Joseph was of the tribe of Judah and Mary was of the tribe of Levi. So you have a merging of the kings and the priests in Christ, even though they were not the actual parents, but, you know, because Christ existed before Mary or Joseph. So, yeah, Christ created the, the heavens and the earth. So, but if you reckon it by the lineage, you know, so... All right, uh, verse 1. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of ja Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah. Now, Bilhah was like a a handmaiden that Joseph, I mean, uh, Jacob had children with. Jacob had children by four women. And Bilhah was one of them. And with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now, Israel loved Joseph, you know, Israel and Jacob are synonymous. The, the Bible uses it 
interchangeably. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And every time I read that, I think of plaid from Scotland, a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him. His brothers hated him. See, that's where you run into trouble. King David had wives, and then the different children from the different wives were always competing against each other. Matter of fact, Absalom, one of David's kids, decided he wanted to be king. He was willing to kill his dad to take that throne. Absalom, yeah. And he, he did. He tried to kill David. David had to run for his life. Uh, you know, a lot of guys think, oh yeah, multiple wives, man, that's a, that's a fantasy. Uh, I, I don't, I don't really think so. I, I don't think so. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a kind of a nightmare. So that's why in the Bible it says, uh, a bishop, Paul writes, a bishop should be the husband of one wife. Yeah. So, all right, so, verse 4. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably, peaceably unto him. Genesis 37, verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream. Joseph was a dreamer. And he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. Well, when you when you have, what's a sheaf? Well, sheaves are um, like when you got wheat. You cut down the plant. And you got this plant stalk. And the wheat kernels are attached to that. And then you got a shake it to separate the wheat kernels from the stalk. They call that winnowing. So they were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. What is obeisance? Well, that's the root word for, uh, one of the root words that comes from obeisance is obey, O-B-E, and then you take a Y and put that on the end and, you know, but obeisance has um, reference to bowing down, obeying, right? So, and his brethren said unto him, shalt thou indeed reign over us, reigning and ruling, you know, ruling. Not uh, rain, water falling from the sky. No, not that kind of rain. Um, shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Oh, yeah. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. All right, so listen carefully, because this is the um, Revelation 12 connection. I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun, the sun, and the moon, and the 11 stars. Remember, this study's about stars, right? And the 11 stars made obeisance to me. Hmm. And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this, what is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves 
to thee to the earth? Shall I, the sun, and thy mother, the moon, and thy brethren, the eleven stars? Well, if you take eleven stars and you add Joseph, that's twelve. The twelve tribes. There you go. Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? The sun, the moon, and the eleven stars, plus Joseph is twelve. Verse 11. And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. Now remember, this is Joseph that went to Egypt and became... Uh, I think it was a second or third ruler in the kingdom. I forget. I, he might have been the second ruler in the kingdom. Only under Pharaoh. And his brethren, they all bowed down to him. But that's another story. I actually have a playlist on that. If you're interested, you know, Joseph, a study of forgiveness. You know, they, the brethren um, sold Joseph into slavery Wanting to get rid of him? Yeah. And then he ends up being the ruler of Egypt. And then they go to Egypt. And, of course, they didn't recognize him. But, uh, you know, probably, who knows, maybe 20-something, 30 years had passed. I don't know. So, I don't know. All right, let's go back to Revelation 12. All right, so let's go back. We are on Revelation 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman, which uh, I believe the woman is the bride of Christ, the church. A lot of people don't want to believe that, but... Uh, you know, they want you to think that the uh, Antichrists over in the Middle East are um, the Bride of Christ. You know, those that reject the Lord, I, I just don't see it. But what do I know? In Revelation 21 and verse 9, And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride. I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. The lamb's wife, the bride. Uh, are, the, are these uh, those that believe and trust in Christ, or are these people that deny him? I mean, it's, you know, questions like this will get you thrown out of churches. So... Paul, he writes in Ephesians 5.25, Husbands, husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Well, guess what? Uh, husbands are supposed to love their wives so much that they're willing to die for their wife, just like Christ did for the church. But uh, sometimes when wives uh, act like Jezebels, it's sometimes it's kind of a little difficult. But then again, a lot of guys are uh, like overgrown children. So I don't know. All right, back to Revelation 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven... A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Twelve stars, which is the twelve tribes. So, matter of fact, let's take a look at something real quick. All right, let's go to Revelation 21. Verse 1, And I saw a new heaven... And a new earth. Uh, why a new earth? Because this present one is polluted and 
and I'm not talking about uh, spiritually polluted, you know, blood spilled on the ground. Yeah, that kind of stuff. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Hmm. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. Uh, why? Because the old one is not holy. It's unholy. It's polluted. Matter of fact, Jerusalem in uh, end time Jerusalem is Babylon. And I got a study on that from the Bible alone. You know, Jerusalem is on seven hills, just like Rome. And Jesus said that Babylon killed the prophets. And then he's, uh, well, I'm sorry, uh, Revelation, John says Babylon killed the prophets. Jesus said Jerusalem killed the prophets. God never sent the prophets to Rome that I can find in the Bible. Not in there. Anybody can find it, I'll send you $100 where God sent prophets to Rome. Rome didn't kill the prophets. They killed, they killed Christians, but the Bible doesn't say that they killed any of God's prophets. Jesus said all the prophets were killed in Jerusalem, period. Jesus was killed in Jerusalem. So, you know, get with the program, people. Get with the program. End time Jerusalem is Babylon. The two witnesses of Revelation, they don't go to Rome. They go to Jerusalem. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Prepared as, not the bride, but prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Hmm. And I believe that's Christ. The tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. See, when Christ was on the cross for the uh, for the to finish, well, to take sin on in the world, he said, "It is finished." But here, he says, "It is done." I am Alpha and Omega, Alpha the first letter in the Greek alphabet, Omega the last, A to Z. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Boy, they don't talk about overcoming anymore, do they? No. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful... See... Christians are not supposed to be fearful. We're not supposed to be. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers, the Harry Potters of the world, right? And idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. There's only two deaths. First death, physical, and the second death, spiritual. 
And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of, of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. Ah, okay, so we're going to find out, hey, the bride, the Lamb's wife. Yeah. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And had a wall, great and high, and had twelve gates. What a coincidence, twelve. You know, some uh, numbers, certain numbers in the Bible pop up a lot. And twelve is one of those numbers. Some numbers are representative of things that are good. Other numbers are representative of things that are not so good. Uh, there's a guy named Bullinger, B-U-L-L-I-N-G-E-R. He did a thing on uh, numbers in scripture. Pretty good. And then there was another guy named Ivan Panin. I-V-A-N, P-A-N-I-N, -A, -A, a Russian mathematician. He started looking into numbers in the Bible and became convinced that the Bible was true because he was like, the way the numbers work out, he's like, this has got to be supernaturally inspired. I've read portions of Ivan Panin's book. One day, maybe I'll read it, but I've been so busy doing Bible studies and research that yeah. So, and had a wall great and high. Uh, heaven has a wall. <laughs> we got to keep out the riffraff, you know? And had a wall great and high and had 12 gates. 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels. And the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Uh, wait a minute. The demon nominational churches will tell you, oh no, the church is not is not Israel. That that's we're separate. We're different. That's what they call dual covenant theology. You know, they make, I don't know how they figure it out. I mean, Paul wrote that there's only one gospel, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one. One is not two. And then they'll tell you that the church is not Israel and Israel's not the church. Well, guess what? There ain't no 13th gate for the Gentiles, the non-Israel is there no there's 12 gates for the 12 tribes there is no 13th gentile gate as they would say so somebody's wrong and i like to point that out to them even though they ignore it but yeah whatever on the east three gates and on the north Three gates, and on the south, three gates, and on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the name of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. So to enter the city, you go through the gate, being Israel, and the foundation of the city is the apostles. Think about it. Well, Christ is the cornerstone, but the foundation is the apostles of the cornerstone. You know, think about it. Verse 15. Well, 13, 14. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names 
of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. Oh yeah. So let me tell you something. There's a wall to keep out the riffraff. So let's see. Back to Revelation 12. I guess verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. In this instance, the stars are angels. The dragon, which is the devil and Satan, took a third of the angels, which is, you know, 33 and a third, right? One third. You know, and you wonder why they love the number 33. You know, let me tell you something. I used to buy uh, records, vinyl, they call them, right? I hear it's making a comeback. You know, turntables. Yeah, I used to have all that stuff. Isn't it a coincidence that records played at 33 revolutions per minute, RPM? 33. Isn't that, what a coincidence. Yeah, yeah, right. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Some people th say that this uh, applies to Cain killing Abel, depending upon who you believe is Cain's daddy. Others say, well, this applies to Mary with Christ and Herod sending the people, well, soldiers to go kill all the children in Bethlehem under a certain age. I think the latter, but yeah. Verse 5. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Now, who's that? Christ. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Christ. And the woman, the church, fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. And I believe this is the tribulation period. But some people say I'm wrong. Time will tell. We will see. Verse 7. And some people say that this is, uh, verse 7 is past. I At least I, I think so. Some people will say it's future. And there was war in heaven. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Why is it an old serpent? Uh, you know, Genesis 3, the serpent talking to Eve. What do you think that was? A talking snake? No. No, no, no. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were, not will be, not in the future, not will be, and his angels were, past tense, cast out with him. In Luke 10 and verse 18, Jesus said, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning, 
fall from heaven. Past. At least that's how I read it. All right, back to Revelation 12. So the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent, devil, and Satan deceives the whole world, cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Bad news for us. Verse 10, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And boy, I've given him a lot of good excuses to accuse me. Trust me. But, and uh, and they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Tell that to the pre-tribbers. Do they love their lives unto the death? Love not their lives unto the death? Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. He's mad. He's P.O.'d. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Fourteen. And to the woman, the church, were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time. Uh, Daniel records a time as being a year, and times, two years, and half a time, from the face of the serpent. Uh, so, three and a half years, approximately. Where do we read about this eagle, the wings of a, of a great eagle? Exodus. All right, in Exodus 19, verse 1, um, the, the Lord took Israel out of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness, the desert. So, like I say, you want to understand the book of Revelation and the symbolism, you got to go back to the Old Testament. Exodus 19.1 In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings. Was there a, a huge eagle that transported these hundreds of thousands of people? No, it's a figure of speech. You know, just like when a guy goes to the beach and, he, and, and he's with his buddy and he sees a girl uh, and he says, wow, look at her, man, what a fox. Yeah, figure of speech. No, she's not a four-legged canine with a tail. So, yeah. Yeah, look at that fox. So, ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. So the Lord likens the exodus out of Egypt to being them on eagles' wings. Now therefore, if, if, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant... Then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. 
What kind of are are we a kingdom of priests and a holy nation? Yeah, I don't think so. We're like a kingdom of goats. All right, back to Revelation 12, 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, just like Egypt did, uh, Israel did in Egypt, into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. See, eagle's wings, Israel was taken out of Egypt. But in this time period, the woman is taken on eagle's wings out of Babylon, the mystery of Babylon. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. I did a video on this too. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood. Yeah, the flood of what? And swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. God doesn't care if you, I mean, the, the devil doesn't care. I'm sorry, not God. The God of this world, the devil does not care if you keep the commandments of God. If you don't have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Or if you have the testimony of Jesus Christ, but you're a, a gross sinner of, with abominations. Uh, you know, the dragon doesn't care about that either. You know, there's uh, churches in San Francisco that will preach on Jesus. But does, that, does their lifestyle change? No. There's no change in their lifestyle. So, yeah. And what is this uh, flood? The waters. What is this flood of waters? Revelation 17, 15. And he said unto me, The waters, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and and nations and tongues. The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. What do you think the flood of the dragon is? Yeah. Yeah. Go to London. Go to Berlin. Go to New York City, Chicago, Miami, Los Angeles. Flood of the dragon. And one day the earth's going to open her mouth and help the woman. It's going to swallow them up. And I got a videos on that too. Oh yeah. I got probably three hours of studying on that. If you're interested. So. All right. Let's, uh, yeah, let's finish. Let's finish this up. Star stars. We got one more thing. What is what is the uh, star? Star stars. I believe it's in Revelation chapter 22. Yep, Revelation chapter 22. We're going to take a look at the morning star. Revelation 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Oh, what commandments? Uh, if you go to the Seventh-day Adventist, they'll tell you, oh, you got to keep the Sabbath. But did Jesus teach that? No. In Matthew 22, 36. Someone asked Jesus, what was the most important commandment? And they said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, 
Love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And hopefully we have enough sense to know that we're not to love the enemies of God and have them as neighbors. Because they were guilty of capital crimes, and guess what the penalty for a capital crime was? Uh, yeah, they wouldn't be living next door to you because, yeah, they, they wouldn't exist. Revelation 22, 14, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. What gates? What city? New Jerusalem. What gates? The 12 tribe gates. For without, or outside, not inside the city, outside, for without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Yeah, the, the wall. What's a wall do? It protects those that are inside. That's the purpose of a wall. Verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David. How can Jesus be the root and the offspring of David? Simple. Christ was God in the flesh. He's the one that created the heaven and the earth. So he was the root of David, but he was also the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Jesus is the bright and morning star. He's the light of the world. And the spirit and the bride say, come and let him that hear us say, come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take of the water of life freely. Beware of the modern Bible versions like the uh, complete Jewish Bible and the NIV that turns Lucifer and Isaiah 14 into the morning star. Sorry, Lucifer is not the morning star. Jesus is. And Jesus is not Lucifer for those of you that uh, follow those modern Bibles. So be cautious about those Bibles, so-called, that uh, delete the word Lucifer and insert the word morning star thus doing a magic trick turning jesus into lucifer who fell from heaven uh i don't think so but uh yeah there's going to be some people that are going to have a problem explaining that with their modern bible translations so-called so yeah yeah and when you find out that the niv is printed uh, the exclusive publishing rights for the NIV, the same company that prints the NIV, prints uh, gay porn and the satanic Bible of the Church of Satan, you kind of understand how they can equate Christ with Lucifer. See, to them, Lucifer is the light bearer. And Jesus is putting shackles and chains on us. You know, Satan that tried to free mankind from the bonds that God the Father wanted to chain his people with. You know, the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, Satanist and witch's motto is do what thou wilt. You know, do whatever you want to do. That's their motto. That shall be the whole of the law. Do, do what thou wilt. Do what you want to do. If it feels good, do it. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, when the serpent told Eve, ye shall not surely die. Oh, yeah. But, uh, well, hey, which, which side are you going to be on? So, all right. Well, that's the end of this study. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.